It seems all so long ago, just nine years to be precise, when the U.S. State Department denied a visa to Narendra Modi following accusations that as a chief minister he had, at the very least, been lax as more than a thousand people were killed at a 2002 anti-Muslim rally. But that was then, and this is now, as Modi's party won parliamentary elections in 2014 and he became prime minister. The U.S. has sought India as a major ally over the course of the past decade, and so it was that India's new prime minister traveled to the United States, addressed the U.N. General Assembly, and was warmly embraced at a concert in New York Central Park, at a sold-out campaign-style rally at Madison Square Garden and at the White House. Later, we'll talk with one of India's leading politicians, but we begin with a look back at Modi's triumphant rise to power with CCTV's Ritu Dixit. The man once shunned and hounded by many, today is embraced with ecstatic frenzies. The meteoric rise of the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi has all the ingredients of grit, charisma and a bit fear of luck. The son of a tea seller, he began his political career as a member of the Hindu Nationalist Party in 1971. In 1985, he began working with the upstart Bhatiya Janata Party, or BJP, ultimately taking over as National Secretary in 1998. But the turning point in his career was when he was appointed the Chief Minister of Gujarat State in 2001. Celibate, vegetarian and a non-drinker, Modi earned a reputation for ruthless efficiency. Four months into his tenure, a train carrying Hindu pilgrims was set on fire. Nearly 60 people were burned to death. A wave of reprisal attacks across Gujarat caused the deaths of at least a thousand people, most of them Muslims. Modi's government was strongly criticized for being ineffective in controlling the chaos. He was ultimately cleared of responsibility by the Indian Supreme Court in 2012. With his relentless focus on economic development and a progressive outlook, Modi continued his efforts in developing Gujarat. His success helped him get nominated as the BJP's candidate for prime minister. Earlier this year, after his party's landslide victory, Modi was sworn in as India's 14th prime minister. He walked onto the national stage at a time when there was a general atmosphere of despondency. There was uh, a lot of anti-incumbency against the existing UPA regime. Uh, and uh, his campaign was built around what he perceived himself to be, which is a strong person, that he has delivered on the governance front in Gujarat. As Prime Minister, Modi wants to reshape India using Gujarat as a model of strong economic development and uplifting the poor. He wants to India make a, a manufacturing hub in that region. So that way, uh, you know, uh, he wants to bring jobs to the country and, uh, you know, uplift the economy, you know, to back to, like, uh, you know, 8% 8, 8 of the GDP. Modi is also placing large attention on foreign relations. And his meeting with Chinese President Xi Jinping in September highlights this focus as he aims to improve bilateral relations with its Asian neighbor. And during his just-concluded visit to the U.S., Modi showcased his priority of strengthening ties with the world's largest economy. He met CEOs of Fortune 500 companies in New York, asking businesses to make substantial investments in India. The five-day U.S. visit is being hailed as a success, coming at a time of strained India-U.S. relations. No politician in independent India has been demonized in such a relentless way as Narendra Modi, and no politician has withstood it with as much resilience. Now as the Prime Minister for the world's biggest democracy, he has a huge task at hand, shunning the past and replicating what he has done in Gujarat on a bigger scale and taking the Indian economic growth story to the next chapter. Ritu Dixit, CCTV, Washington, D.C.